Hi, my name's Therese, and I'm so excited to talk about cross-sectional survey of patient and family perceptions of research coordinator attire in the intensive care unit. This project was supervised by Dr. Kirsten Feist and funded by the Alberta Innovate Summer Studentship. Imagine you or someone you care about is admitted to the intensive care unit at the hospital, also known as the ICU. Feelings of worry or uncertainty about the illness, as well as the unfamiliar location and the large care team, can make the ICU environment extremely overwhelming for patients and families. But recruitment of ICU patients and their family members into research studies is essential to conduct studies that may improve patient and family-centered care. Unlike members of the ICU care team, research coordinators don't have a pre-existing relationship with the patient or the family and have to build their trust before they feel comfortable to participate in a study. Previous studies have shown that a person's attire could influence trust. For example, physicians in professional dress are rated as more trustworthy by family members of ICU patients. Research is lacking on the effect of research coordinator attire on ICU patient and family perceptions, and knowing this could be an important modifiable factor to help improve research engagement. Our objectives are to one, evaluate the importance of research coordinator attire to ICU patients and families when being asked to participate in research, Two, describe patient and family perceptions of research coordinators based on their attire. For example, that would be competency or the trustworthiness. And three, examine associations between perceptions of research coordinator attire and patients or family characteristics. The survey was developed in summer of 2022. First, a participant records their demographic information. That would be things like their age. Participants then answer on a five-point scale from not very important to very important what factors influence their first impressions of research coordinators. For example, how important is their hygiene or how important is their professional dress? Participants then describe what they think of research coordinator attire and how it affects how they think of a study with a textbook. Participants are then shown four graphical depictions of research coordinators in different levels of dress, for example, jeans or a suit jacket, and then are asked to select which outfit they prefer. For example, participants would select if they think a research coordinator wearing jeans would be more trustworthy than one wearing a jacket. There's also a free text section for participants to write what they think can be done to improve first impressions. An important part of research is including perspectives from all kinds of people, from multiple disciplines and backgrounds. We communicated with research coordinators across Canada and patient partners, these are people who have previously been ICU patients, to ensure that our survey is accurate, reliable, and low burden. For example, we use their feedback to move from gender neutral to gender inclusive clothing, as you can see here. This study is currently in the recruitment phase. Patients and families are recruited from participating ICUs in four Calgary area hospitals with a total of 37 participants recruited so far. Participants are included in the study if they're 18 years of age or older, have the ability to provide informed consent, and can communicate in English. Consenting eligible patients and their family members will be approached to complete our 15 minute survey. After recruitment is finished, we will determine demographic characteristics and response preferences using descriptive statistics. That would be something like, did the age of participants affect their attire preferences? Textual data from the written sections will be analyzed by themes using Braun and Clark's approach. Our next steps involve the recruitment of participants, which will take part into next year. We're also planning on disseminating our results through manuscript submission to a peer-reviewed journal. Our end goal is to integrate patient and family perspectives, which could be used to optimize study engagement and future research participation. I'd like to acknowledge the whole research team and our amazing patient partners and research coordinators who collaborated with us on this project. Thank you.